to numbers. So let's assume that, again, that earlier example, the B2B portal, every single year, remember, it gives us a net cash inflow of $60,000. And assume the lifetime of that portal is for six years. So altogether, the cash inflows we're getting overall is $360,000. And assuming that the depreciation, since it tells you that the asset depreciates and the salvage value, the residual value is zero. So the total depreciation at the end of the asset's lifetime is the entire investment that you made earlier, $240,000. The initial cost of the asset is the total part that you will depreciate, depreciable cost. So overall, the operating income you're getting out of this investment is $120,000 operating income after six years of using the asset. Then you divide it by six to figure out an average annual operating income, $20,000. Okay, so the first step here when you look at each and every problem, ask yourself what is the net cash inflow? So for this problem here is $60,000 per year. And you use it for six years. So this is the lifetime of the asset. Every single year you have $60,000. All together the total cash inflow is $360,000. That's the first line here. Second, since we're comparing operating incomes, so this is only net cash inflow. We are considering using the asset, the downgrade of the asset, that downgraded value is $240,000 meaning after we use the asset for six years, it doesn't worth anything. So we reduce the $240,000 to figure out the operating income, $120,000. So this is the total operating income for six years. And we divide it by six, the average annual income will be $20,000. Okay, so this example is representing what's there in the upper table. A is the total cash flow, $360,000. B is the depreciable cost, $240,000. The initial cost you spent on the asset, at the end of six years, the value becomes zero. So you will totally depreciate the entire thing. So A minus B gives you $120,000, the total operating income for six years. Then you divide it by C, which is the lifetime, six years. So what does this give you? How does this link to rate of return? What is the $20,000? How is it used? That's only the numerator of the ratio. So you got the $20,000. What about the denominator? Average amount invested in this asset. What is the amount that you invest into the asset? Meaning, what is the amount that, what is the price that you paid for the asset? Mm, 60,000 is the return you're getting out of it. 120 is comparing the return against the money that you spend. So really the money that you spend is 240,000, right? Remember initially when you invest in the B2B portal, you spend a huge amount of money, 240000 You hope that it gets you return every single year, and we estimate every single year it gives you 60000 So you total these up, gives you a total net cash inflow, 360. dollars Remember the asset value totally disappears at year end. So the $240,000, the initial cost you invested in, disappears. Overall, you're getting 120000 and overall, every single year you're getting average $20,000. Yes, you can think of it that way. So on average, every single year you're getting $20,000 while you use this B2B portal if you actually invest in it. So the rate of return here, you use the $20,000 divided by $120,000, the average amount you invest in this, in this asset. So this ratio here, we define this average investment, the initial cost that you spend plus any leftover value, which in this case we assume is zero, and you divide it by two, gives you the average value of the asset. Okay, again, so all what we did in the previous slide, 
going through the uh, total return of the assets minus depreciation, operating income divided by six, all of that is just giving you the average operating income that you're getting every single year, $20,000. So after this, don't forget to divide it by average value of the investment. So we define average value of investment by beginning assets value plus the ending assets value divided by two. So this ratio gives us 16.7%, which means on average, per dollar of investment you made to the asset, it gives you 16 cents of returns. Yes, you can think of it that way. Or on average, $100 of investment, you're getting $16 out of it. So we will use this to compare against different investment projects. The higher the rate of return, the better, the more attractive the project is. So of course, if the business also set in place a minimum rate of return threshold, if this doesn't exceed, for example here, if they set it as 20%, any of the projects that is below 20%, they're going to decline and reject it. Then in this case, they will reject it. So if the rate of return threshold, let's say, is 15%, and your rate of return here is 16%, then you will accept this project. Okay, so this... For each and every problem given to you, you'll be given what is the desired rate of return, and you compare this particular project against that desired rate of return. If it exceeds it, then you can accept the project. If it's lower than it, then decline it. Two hundred forty thousand is the beginning, and then you plus the ending divided by two. So you want to. This $120,000, think of it as kind of the constant value of the asset. You spread it out. So the original value was $240,000. Of course, it degrades as we use it. But we just assume overall, on average, it's $120,000. That's the worth of it. Divided by two? Because we're using average. Right, so the beginning, so the average of the assets investment value will be beginning plus any residual value divided by two. On average, what's the assets worth? Of course, in the beginning years, they're worth more. Ending years, they're almost worth nothing. But on average, they're worth about 120000 So if this problem here, if there is a residual value at the end, let's say $10,000, then you'll be using 240,000 plus 10,000 divided by two. So it will be $125,000. If there was a residual value, 10,000 at the end, then this part here will be substituted to whatever residual value there is.